And it's hard to convince, you know, military people who are type A that to get fast on your mile and a half, you got to run <laughs> slow because that's why they're in the military, right? They're, they're like, you know, I'm going to go harder than this dude. But, you know, we, we t- started teaching this for the military mile and a half run. So the people, they, they were convinced because it was the high intensity culture. Well, I got to run a mile and a half. I need to run it fast. So I have to train fast. But no, the opposite was true that, you know, because that really is at what we would call that that lactate threshold where we're not able to buffer the lactate where ultimately you're starting to get acidic and you shut down. Mm -hmm. It's not because you're out of fuel. It's only a mile and a half. You get enough acidity where you're just like, I'm done. But so to raise that that level, you have to raise that first level, you know, so that you push it up. Let's talk about lactate shuttle for a little bit, because this is kind of an extension of some of the things you've mentioned over here, but can you break that down in simple terms? Yeah, in simple terms. So when I was, uh, you know, early track days, you know, and uh, in early medical school, right? So like when you ran hard, you developed lactic acid, right? Like probably everyone is, I'm 56, you know, coach, you know, you're building up lactic acid and then, and, uh, you know, and then no kidding, in medicine, you know, we measure lactate in our septic patients, sick ICU patients, because it's a marker of hypoxia and it's a marker of mitochondrial dysfunction. So when when lactate is up, the the, the system is more acidic. So the basics, you know, written on the back of a napkin for exercise physiology. So we've got three fuel sources that our bodies can use for energy and it's all happening in the mitochondria. So we have billions and billions of mitochondria in our body our heart's probably the most and brain are the most rich in mitochondria. And these need to produce energy. And so we can put fat into these mitochondria. That's a more sluggish process, multiple enzymes involved. Um, a little more oxygen involved to do that. That's why you got to be going a little slower, more patient to tap into the fat. You know, so it's kind of like a series of gears. Glucose is like you got to climb up the hill, hit the gears you're using glucose right away. Now, glucose has a couple different pathways. Right away, glucose shuttles to this other uh, byproduct called pyruvate and makes lactate. This is the anaerobic system without oxygen, and this is not happening in the mitochondria. This process is happening in what's called the cytosol of the cell. If you were to pull up a model of a cell, you've got the energy factories, the mitochondria. This is where the magic happens. But if we need energy really quick, and you can do it without need, using the mitochondria, so you can produce a couple ATP, you know, whereas fat can mm-hmm. produce about 120 or 150 ATP. So the, but you get you can get the ATP right away in the glucose path, but you produce what's called lactate, and that lactate is necessary when you break down glucose, and that lactate produces acidity. It just travels with acidity. The more lactate, the more acidic the environment is. And ultimately, that acidity is what makes your brain and your muscles say, no bueno, I'm done. Now, that glucose, in the presence of oxygen, that pyruvate can get into the mitochondria. And it's called aerobic activity. But you're using glucose, but you're not really producing the lactate. Not as efficient as the fat. But when you kind of ramp up the speed a little bit too high to allow oxygen to do its job, you're producing this lactate. Now, that lactate can have a couple fates. So the unfit, metabolically sick patient, that lactate cannot get back into the mitochondria. There's no, the mitochondria are dysfunctional. We produce acidity. And my patients who have diabetes type 2, they produce lactate getting off the couch we put them, I do exercise testing here three days a week at my hospital at like stage one of a stress test. They're already, mm-hmm. they're already gassed. They're already getting acidic. Now the fit athlete, so these, this uh, lactate is mostly produced by what are called the type two. This, these are more your fast twitch power fibers. The type one fibers, these slower twitch fibers, they love fat. They don't use glucose quite as much and they don't produce the lactate quite as much. So when you're kind of getting into that pace, maybe a tempo run where you're <sighs> you breathing a little harder, right? You are in, you're tapping into those faster twitch fibers, producing some lactate. But kind of as Frank Shorter discovered, if you have a really robust type one fiber system, slow twitch fiber system, what happens is you got this magic shuttle, like a little shuttle bus that can take that lactate 
and bring it back into the mitochondria as another energy source. And all roads lead to what's called acetyl-CoA for the nerds out there. So this <laughs> lactate can now become a fuel. So it's like, wow, this thing that we thought was a toxic byproduct is a fuel. So that's why people that are massively aerobically fit can do interval training, right? Because you can go do, you know, eight quarters on the track, but you recover, right? So you build up the acidity, right? We've all done that. But wait, now, like in a minute, your heart rate's back down. Mm -hmm. You're fine. You can hit it again. But if you didn't build that type, and that's that's happening in the type one fiber. So you're building up the acidity in the type twos, but all of that easy training builds the type one. So you're building this massive base of type one fibers that can buffer. So you kind of have to earn the right to do interval training. <laughs> so without, that's what shorter linear runners discovered. If they didn't do all of that, or, you know, all the cross country skiers in Norway, right? They do 80 to 90% of their Killian Journey. You had him on the mm -hmm. show, right? He's yeah. a massive fat burner. He eats a lot of carbohydrates, but he's, he can burn fat for fuel because he goes out on six hour runs without eating. And he's mostly in zone one. Mm -hmm. And when you, when you look at an elite athlete, their zone one is like our zone five. Right? <laughs> <laughs> they, they're so fit, right? Like, so he's, he's technically physiologically like, like not even fat maxing, mm -hmm. right? He's just out for a walk, but he's running like an eight minute mile up a mountain, you know, at an effort that you and I would be, you know, gassed. But yeah, so the bigger the base, you know, the higher the peak, you know, so without the base, you're like Pisa, right? You're either mm -hmm. going to be like Pisa, you know, big pyramid, and, you know, the, as Siler says, you know, training is, is you're, you're baking the cake and racing is eating the cake, you know, so you're building this, this base, to be able to buffer that acidity. And that holds true in any rowing, cycling. Look at the best Tour de France riders, right? They've got this massive, they're not even producing lactate, you know, to any degree that would cause any discomfort until they're like at 300 watts. And if you're a cyclist, you know that, like, holy shit, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's like all out. But these guys are yeah. having a conversation. But that's and they're not on low carb diets, or they they've built this metabolic machinery that mm -hmm. they can use fat for fuel because the type one fibers use fat for fuel. Whether you're, you know, eating more or less carbohydrates is, you know, you can shift it a little bit, but it's more about the training that's doing that necessarily than what your habitual diet is. The habitual diet can move it, but I hope that makes sense in plain yeah, language. Yeah. So, so so once again to summarize low heart rate training is very important to build that pace that is even going to be beneficial at a higher intensity. Yeah, yeah then you can do the mile race or the 5K. We started teaching this for the military mile and a half run. So the people, they, they were convinced because it was the high intensity culture. Well, I got to run a mile and a half. I need to run it fast. So I have to train fast. But no, the opposite was true that, you know, because that really is at what we would call that that lactate threshold where we're not able to buffer the lactate where ultimately you're starting to get acidic and you shut down, mm -hmm. right? You're not, it's not because you're out of fuel. It's only a mile and a half. You get enough acidity where you're just like, I'm done. But so to raise that, that level, you have to raise that first level, you know, so that you push it up 